This is KGW News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Braxton. Just 30 minutes ago, a winner was called in the Oregon governor's race. The Oregonian is projecting that Tina Kotek has defeated Republican Christine Drazen, but Drazen has not conceded yet. Here are the latest numbers. In making this projection, the Oregonian says Kotek will add to her lead when more votes are tabulated from Multnomah County. Based on the Oregonian's analysis, Drazen will pick up votes in Clackamas, Marion, and Yamhill counties, but it won't be enough to overtake Kotek. Last night, the candidates urged voters to be patient as the votes are tallied. And as you know, the legislature passed two new changes that make it even easier to vote. And while that is good for democracy, it also means we need to be patient and it will just take longer for all the votes to be counted. Right, Oregonians have spoken and we are waiting. We're waiting for the votes to be counted, but we are confident that they will demand change, that they will vote for balance, and they will create the accountability that we haven't seen in our state for far too long. We've reached out to both campaigns to get reaction. We'll update you online on our social platforms and on air starting tonight on the News at 5. Earlier this morning, the Oregonian called this Portland City Council race, projecting that businessman and political newcomer Renee Gonzalez has defeated incumbent commissioner Joanne Hardesty. Gonzalez campaigned as a law and order moderate, and he built a double digit lead. Also, voters said yes to charter reform in Portland, overhauling the way city government runs. The mayor would oversee a new professional city manager, and the council would be in charge of policy. These reforms would expand the council to 12 members and divide the city into four geographic districts, each of which would elect three commissioners using ranked choice voting. Right now, the city is meeting to discuss what the future looks like in light of these changes. Well, it looks like Oregon voters have approved a sweeping gun control measure. The Oregonian is projecting it'll pass, even though it's close. To buy a gun, Measure 114 requires a permit issued by police, photo ID, fingerprints, firearms training, a background check, and a fee. It would also ban magazines that hold more than 10 rounds of ammunition. There are also Oregon congressional races that are undecided today. In the 5th District, Republican Lori Chavez-Dereamer is leading Democrat Jamie McLeod Skinner. If Chavez-Dereamer wins, Republicans will flip this seat. The former mayor of Happy Valley wouldn't talk last night, but we did get a chance to talk with McLeod Skinner. And now it's just making the space for all the election staff and volunteers who we are so appreciative of to just be able to have the, the time and space to do their work now. And in the new sixth congressional district created after the 2020 census, Democrat Andrea Salinas leads Republican Mike Erickson. Salinas was on the legislative committee that drew up this new district. We wanted to talk to her last night, but she wasn't available. Erickson did talk to us at his campaign party. It's a really diverse district, and it's probably unlike any other districts. It really truly represents Oregon, and I can't wait to represent it back in Congress. They need a really a, a, someone with some common sense, can reach across party lines and work together to address all the needs of the 6th District. I hope to be that person. And in southwest Washington, we may not have a call in the 3rd Congressional District for days. Right now, Democrat Marie Glusenkamp Perez has the lead over Republican Joe Kent. There are still plenty of votes to count in this race. Evan Watson spoke to both campaigns after the first batch of results came in. Marie Glusenkamp Perez tells me these early results exceed her expectations, and her campaign is cautiously optimistic moving forward. But the big story here, there are still a lot of votes left to be counted and this race could change and evolve over the coming days as those votes are tallied. Marie Glusenkamp Perez says she hopes the votes are going to hold and this result is going to hold in the next couple of days. She thanked election workers for verifying signatures and counting ballots for the days to come. A crowd cheered the early results at a downtown Vancouver hotel tonight. Glusenkamp Perez says it shows a normal person can run for Congress and connect with voters who want a, quote, more moderate choice.
This is where the work really starts, right? This is where the opportunity is to really put your nose down and do the work that it takes. And so we're excited about the opportunity. It's, it's, a, it's a huge honor should it come to actual fruition. We're excited and, and we'll be watching numbers closely. On the other side, Republican candidate Joe Kent did not make a statement tonight. The Kent campaign denied members of the press access to their event in Brush Prairie. Instead, Kent campaign manager Ozzie Gonzalez said Joe Kent feels good with the early results and believes he will gain ground in the days to follow, just like he did in the August primary, thanks to Republican voters who dropped off their ballots today. In the spot we're in right now, I mean in the primary, came back from a five-point deficit after the, uh, after the initial night. So. You know, we don't think we don't think these uh, results are really reflective of what the results will be. I think we'll, we'll know more Wednesday, Thursday as they continue to process and count ballots. As Joe Kent has previously questioned the results of the 2020 election, I asked Joe Kent's campaign manager if he will accept the results of this election now that he holds a small deficit to Glusen Kent Perez. Kent's campaign manager said yes, Joe Kent will accept the results, which is the same thing that Joe Kent told me himself about a month ago. So now Marie Glusenkamp Perez and Joe Kent await the voting result updates in the days to come to see who will come out on top in this race. In Vancouver, Evan Watson, KGW News. Despite polls showing the race for U.S. Senate in Washington was tightening, Democrat Patty Murray easily won re-election over Republican Tiffany Smiley. Murray is headed back to D.C. for her sixth term as a U.S. Senator. Well, with so many tight races to talk about, we wanted to get some insight from political analyst Patrick Singh. He's a lobbyist with the nonpartisan Public Affairs Council. We talked about the Oregon legislature, where it appears Democrats will not keep their supermajority. I think that's what voters are wanting, and I think um, especially in the Senate, where you'll probably end up in a 16, 14, maybe 17, 13 type situation, that means if you're a moderate on either side, you're gonna have a lot of power. So you've really gotta draw into the middle there to make sure that, uh, that, that you can pass things because you don't have the numbers to just do whatever you want. And with the new uh, uh, measure that prevents walkouts, that's mm -hmm. gonna throw another wrench in, in things as well. Same thing on the House side. Singh says the message voters sent is that Oregon doesn't need a complete political reversal but it does need more balance. And one quick update on the hotly contested Senate race in Georgia between Raphael Warnock and Herschel Walker. Just a couple of hours ago, NBC reported it's heading to a runoff. That will happen December 6th. So we may not know which party has a majority in the U.S. Senate until then. This noon, Bree Jackson has a look at some of the other races making news nationally. Control of the House and Senate remains up in the air this afternoon as the battle for Georgia's U.S. Senate seat is now set for a runoff election in December. Both parties did pick up crucial wins mixed with some unexpected losses. Democratic incumbent Representative Sean Maloney, Morning, who was also chair of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, conceded his race. And we gave it our all and we beat the spread. And Republican Senator Ron Johnson is now the projected winner in a tight Wisconsin race. In Pennsylvania, voters elected Democrat John Fetterman to fill the seat of a retiring Republican. I'll be the next U.S. Senator from Pennsylvania. It was a big night for Democrats in the Keystone State as Josh Shapiro won his bid for governor. In a neighboring state, Ohio, Trump-backed Republican J.D. Vance won a highly competitive race. We've had a good night in the Ohio Republican Party, haven't we? Wow. Although it was not the red wave that some predicted this midterm, Democrats outperformed during an election cycle that historically does not favor the party in power. In the House, Virginia's Abigail Spanberger retained her seat in a swing district. We must recommit ourselves to the cause of our country. Republicans believe they'll secure enough seats to flip control of the House. NBC News exit polls show inflation was a top issue for Republican voters. In Washington, Bree Jackson for NBC News. And we'll continue to update election numbers on air and online. You can find the latest anytime at KGW.com and on the KGW app.